Okay, so we um, need to talk about osteic disease reproduction. And this is just kind of an interesting article that was run in the San Francisco Chronicle um, a little while ago now. Goodness, 11 years ago now. Wow. Um, so basically, here, here's what, what was happening. So people were living at the beach, okay? Um, and every year at a certain time um, at night, they would be trying to sleep and they just hear this really, really loud like humming noise. It was just like a perfect A flat just humming all night. Okay? And it was loud. So can you imagine just like all night trying to sleep and it's just like, mm, like that's what was happening. Okay? And so people were annoyed, having a hard time sleeping, and conspiracy theorists were like, oh, you know, it's the government trying to kill us all. And like th people were coming up with all sorts of theories as to why there's this noise. Um, well, marine biologists went to stay at the beach and heard this noise and was like, oh, I know what that is. That's the mating call of a fish. Okay, so this fish called the plain fin midshipman um, actually makes this humming noise in order to attract females and to reproduce. So they can make noise. It's strange. And this is what it looks like right there. The plain fin midshipman making that awesome noise. So fish, when they reproduce, they are going to um, be doing external fertilization, which is different from chondrichthyes, right? So does chondrichthyes have internal or external fertilization? Internal, right? The males have claspers that they will use to transfer sperm to the female. In um, osteichthyes, they have external fertilization. Okay, so what happens is they will release eggs and sperm like into the water column or onto a surface. Um, and fertilization of the egg will happen outside of the mother's body, okay, either in the water column or on a surface. Okay. When this happens, so when they have like they release those eggs and they s the sperm out into the water, um, it's called spawning. Okay. You have two different kinds of spawning. You have free spawning, um, which is when those gametes, the eggs and sperm, are just shed free into the water column and they're floating around and the egg gets fertilized and then develops into a baby. Okay. Um, benthic spawning is when the females will go and like attach the eggs to a surface like a rock, like a piece of seagrass, like kelp, okay, something like that. And then the males will fertilize the eggs after that. Okay? So it's called benthic spawning because it's benthic on the bottom, right? Um, so they'll spawn, and then after that, you can have um, some behaviors that we didn't see in chondrichthyes. Is when chondrichthyes reproduce, right? Remember, like if they give live birth, the mothers actually have hormones that prevent them from eating their babies. Um, and then they're all on their own once they hatch or whatever, right? So they're on their own. But in um, osteichthyes, you actually have some behaviors where, where the parents will take care of the eggs and babies. Um, so you can have like garters or bearers. Okay, so a garter will actually like keep watch over the eggs after they're laid and like try and fight off any predators that come around. Um, so you know, like in Nemo, with the mom and the dad had like the eggs in that little spot, and then. You know, they're like, oh, so happy. And then the barracuda comes and the mom's like, no. Oh, and like, yeah, the sad part of the ma that movie, okay. Um, that, they're guarding those eggs, right? So it's a guarding behavior to guard those eggs. Uh, bears actually keep the fertilized eggs in either like a pouch on their body, like seahorses. So male seahorses have a pouch on their body where the females will lay the eggs and they'll fertilize the eggs and then develop inside this little pouch. And then when they're ready to hatch, they come out of that pouch. Um, you also have like mouth brooders where they'll open their mouth and like they'll have like the eggs either like inside their mouth. Okay, and while they do that, they're not going to be eating, right? Because they, they've got the eggs inside their mouth. And they'll also do that um, a little bit after the eggs hatch. So like the, the babies will be out like, you know, eat feeding and then if a predator comes, the mom or dad will open its mouth and then the babies will all go back in and they'll close the mouth to keep the baby safe. So yeah, so you can have garters and you can have bears. Um, you can also have certain kinds that will actually attach the eggs like to a surface on their body. So like just on their abdomen or something like that, they'll just attach the eggs there rather than inside of a pouch. So there's your little daddy seahorses carrying around the little babies. Okay. All right. Do you remember way back um, in la the beginning of last semester where we talked about sequential hermaphrodites? Yeah, where you change gender, you go from one gender to the other. Well, some fish will be sequential hermaphrodites. 
Okay. So they'll either start off as male and then switch and become female, or they'll start off as female and switch and become male. And they do that in order to increase their reproductive success. So increase how much they're able to reproduce. So we have special names for that. Um, protandry is when you go from a male to a female. Okay, so you start off life as a male and then become a female. And protogeny is when you start off life as a female and become a male later in life. All right. So the male becomes a female in protandry and the female becomes a male in protogeny. Okay, so here's graph, um, and here's, here's what these mean. And you have these in your notes. So as you go to the right on this graph, on the x-axis, okay, that represents an increase in body size. So as you move farther to the right, you increase your body size. Um, and then the y-axis on this graph represents reproductive success. So as you go up, you increase your reproductive success. Okay, so this one on the left is protandry, which means you're going to start off life as a male and then become a female. Okay. Um, and so if you look at this, the dotted line represents the male, the pink line, solid line represents the female. If you start off life as a male, okay, in these types of fish, um, you start off life, same body size as the female, okay, but your reproductive success is already greater than a female of the same size. Why? Well, it's a fact of life. Sperm are really easy to make, okay? Uh, it doesn't take a lot of energy to make sperm. So if you're small, okay, and you have a harder time finding food, okay, it's harder for you to get food, you have less energy, okay, and um, so you can still reproduce when you're small if you can produce sperm because they're easy to make. Does that make sense? Um, eggs are harder to pr produce, great, right, because you've got to create like a yolk in there to, for all, and all this energy storage for the baby to nourish the baby so, so it can grow up and become um, hopefully an adult. Uh, and so it takes a lot more energy. So once you reach a certain body size, you're able to hunt more efficiently, right? get food more efficiently, maybe compete better with others of your kind and get more food um, and be able to produce the eggs. Okay? So you, if you start off life as a male, you already have a higher reproductive success okay? until you reach a certain body size when it becomes beneficial to switch and become a female. And they switch and become a female and their reproductive success increases even more. Does that make sense? So it's called protandry. Um, same, the graph on the right is protogeny, and um, same kind of idea, body size, reproductive success. Okay, uh, and again, you start off life as, well, you start off life as a female. Okay, and females and males, when they're, if they were born male, then they would have basically the same reproductive success when they're first like hatched. Okay, um, so they would have basically the same. But if you notice. Okay, as the body size increases, the females increase in reproductive success, right? Whereas the males, they remain like pretty much nothing, okay? Until they reach a certain body size and then it skyrockets for them. Uh, the reason for this is uh, these types of fish, the males uh, need to be big enough to guard like a spot, okay? Um, and so, and like then they've kind of got like their territory. And so when they reach a certain body size, they can guard that spot. And only the dominant male that's in that area and okay, guarding this area mates. Okay, so if you're a small little fish, you can't compete with the larger male, so you don't get a mate until you reach a certain body size, and then you can start defending your territory. But if you start off life as a female, okay, and as your body size increases, your reproductive success also goes up, um, and so you reproduce all the time while you're female, you switch, reach a certain size, switch and become a male. All right, so you increase the reproductive success that way. So you have more reproductive success if you switch than if you just start off life and as one and stay that way. Yeah? Okay. Example of protandry, male to female, would be clownfish. I don't show this in Nemo, but when Nemo's mom died, Nemo's dad would have become Nemo's mom. So Marlin would have become Marlena. Um, yeah, but Disney is not going to do that. Um, and then the protogeny would be a California sheep's head. So they start off life as female, and then they switch to male. And when they switch, they actually completely change what they look like. It's weird. It looks like two different fish. So, crazy. Go. All right. You can also have some fish that will do reproductive migrations. So they will migrate. 
in order to reproduce. We talked about this a little bit when we talked about lampreys. Um, but catadromous fish are born and breed in salt water, and then they live in fresh water as adults. So that means that they hatch um, in the ocean, and then they'll like swim up rivers when they are a certain size, and they'll live their adult life in rivers. And then when it's time for them to reproduce, they swim back to the ocean. Okay. Anadromous is when they start off life in freshwater. So eggs are laid in freshwater, they hatch in freshwater, reach a certain size, move to the ocean, spend their entire adult life in the ocean, ready to reproduce, go back up the rivers. So like a salmon would do that. Okay. And a lamprey. We talked about lampreys. All right. So here's a picture to help you kind of see this. <coughs> so here's the eggs in the ocean, okay? Once they reach a certain size, they will move to the freshwater, okay? So they live in freshwater as adults uh, into their adult stage in their adult life, and then once they um, are ready to reproduce, they go back to the ocean. So you have certain kinds of freshwater eels that will do this, okay? Um, here's your anadromous. So the little eggs start in fresh water, they hatch, they grow up, they be can become a certain size, they swim to the ocean, spend their adult life in the ocean, and they're ready to reproduce back to fresh water, like salmon. All right? Um, so the top picture right there on the right, that's the smolt, so that's the size and like what the salmon will look like when they actually move down to the ocean. Um, and then this is what they look like when they're going back up the river. All right? So certain kinds of salmon actually like switch colors when they're ready to reproduce. Yeah, they like turn this orangey red, like red color and like their face changes shape and like they look really ugly actually <laughs> when they're ready to reproduce. So, yeah, it's strange. Okay, 